Welcome fans to Talking T-Birds, our weekly coaches show. I'm your host, Phil Kohler, and as always, joined by the head coach of the Casper College Lady Thunderbirds, Coach Canary. Good to see you, Phil. Good to see you too, Coach. And Coach, a lot to talk about today. Yeah. Um, it, it's not just no longer Coach Canary, it's now the, uh, the head coach of the Region 9 North Champions, the Region 9 Tournament Champions. You guys moved to 30 and 3 overall. You guys have won 17 games in a row, and now you're going to the national yeah. tournament, coach, as a 15 seed. How are you feeling? Well, uh, we talked to the girls on on Sunday right before we found out what seed we were, and we mentioned all those things that that we've accomplished. So uh, right now, this this season's been extremely special, and sure. now all that's left is how special is it going to get? Because the things that you rattled off is they're very hard to do and it takes a lot of effort from a lot of people to make those accomplishments so everything that we add on at the national tournament is just going to add on to a very special season already absolutely the icing on the cake per se um so coach lots to get into today first off we haven't talked since last week um they announced the all region team yes uh, you guys have two players, Sandra Frau Garcia, Jocelyn Igo, both <laughs> become all conference players. Sandra, the uh, conference player of the year. I know we had Jocelyn on a few weeks ago. Coach, give us a little bit of a rundown on both of those players. Let's give Jocelyn first her time and talk about what she does and why she deserved this honor. Uh, uh, just tremendous, tremendous score for us. Um, but that, that isn't even what, what, it, what her strength is. Um, Jocelyn is, is probably our best uh, provider of energy. Every single practice since August 28th or whatever we started, you, you can hear Jocelyn trying to bring up our energy and all those kind of things, all the positivity. Uh, Jocelyn also has a tremendous basketball IQ and, and understands not only what we're supposed to do, but understands what the team, uh, our opponent is trying to do. So Jocelyn's skill set is uh, outstanding to start out with, but I think it's the intangibles about sure. Jocelyn that really separates her from from, from most players in our league. Well, and I've seen that work ethic from her. You know, it, it's gotta be a difficult transition going from a 3A school in Wyoming to playing it at the junior college level. I mean, that's a huge jump, but she's obviously been able to make it and over that first year make the adjustments mm -hmm. and now really turn into a really good player her second year. Outstanding and little backstory on Jocelyn, which is incredible. I don't know how many people can say this, but um, Jocelyn's never not won a championship you know yeah, <laughs> she sure. won three state yeah. titles at douglas and probably would have won a fourth if covid wouldn't have stopped it sure. in its tracks and then she's won two region nine championships here at casper college so you know but there's there's a common denominator on on those championships and that's jocelyn and they're, they're, she's played a big role in that absolutely and then coach uh, sandra frau garcia the north player of the year um talk a little bit about i know we we talk every week about what she does mm -hmm. for the team but Give us a little bit more in depth as far as what she does. Oh, just, I mean, she just controls the tempo of the game for number one, you know, and um, her energy is, is just like Jocelyn. She never takes a moment off, you know, both offensively and defensively. We probably know, you know, we think of her for her transition or passing and transition or assists and ability to get to the rim. But Sandra is also one of our best, if not the best on ball defenders that we have. Um, she's right up in the top in, in rebounding for our team as well. So uh, as, as Jocelyn does, Sandra plays a huge role in so many areas of our, our success. Sure. And then for the women's side, you guys also select an all-defense yes. team. Julia Palomo, more than deserving of, of some sort of recognition. I'm glad that you guys had the opportunity to give her that on the defensive side. I th you hit the nail on the head there because some sort. Because mm -hmm. she could have easily, in my opinion, been in the top ten of the region and made sure. the all-region team as well. Um, Julia is probably one of the best players that I've coached that goes under the radar. Sure. You just, she just does so many little things, and her and Sandra feed off each other, especially in, in transition and in the half court and stuff like that. But uh, Julia's defensive ability is just part of her game. So she was very de uh, deserving of that recognition and probably even a little more. Sure. Well, and you talk about, Coach, that – you know, not everybody gets to score all the points. Not everybody gets to get all the rebounds. Mm -hmm. Julia, that player that goes, you know, a little under the radar statistically, um, but man, she does so many good things. She, to help team. she impacts it at every phase of the game. I, I know my family follows our games real well, including my wife and my daughters, et cetera. And that's the conversation all the time. Man, Julie impacted that game. Man, Julie, you know, yeah. her name comes up all the time in the private conversations, and, and there's a reason for that. Absolutely. So, Coach, this last weekend, you guys go out, you win three big basketball mm -hmm. games. You guys win a Region 9 tournament championship. Um, you guys start out with NJC, you win 93-76. You get five players in double figures. Uh, Flora with 22, Logan with 21, Jocelyn 16, Julia 15, Sandra 14. 
Talk a little bit about that performance on Thursday and opening up the tournament. Great balance and a lot of credit to NJC. We had played them earlier in November and this didn't surprise me because we did a lot of uh, video scouting and stuff like that coming into it. But they, they probably were one of the most improved teams in Region 9. And you know the score indicates 17, 20 points, somewhere in there, but that was a close ball game. I think it was within five points early in the fourth quarter and, and then we, we got some quick transition baskets and, and and spread it out, but it, it took a 40 minute effort to, to beat NJC and, and you know, the balance scoring always is a positive. Yeah, well, and you talk about that, that 40 minute effort, you really needed that all three days. Um, yes. On Thursday with NJC, you guys are credited with 30 assists on 36 made field goals. Um, how good does that make you feel as a coach? It's just kind of been the way um, our team has been all year. They're very unselfish. They'll make the extra pass. If somebody has a better shot than they do, there's nobody that is, in my opinion, that is looking to score only for themselves sure. you know it's it's how can we score for a team and stuff like that so their unselfishness has been shown with that stat pretty much all year and I feel like coach that's a staple of your your program in general and it's been that way for several years um, so moving on to Friday coach you guys get the rematch with L triple C the old adage with with coaches is it's, it's difficult to beat a team three times in a mm -hmm. season um, especially a good team like yeah. that you guys um, end up winning 85 58 but you're down in the middle of the third mm -hmm. quarter you guys are held to 32 points at halftime. What, what kind of changed when you guys got into the second half? Well, just a lot of credit to the kids for just staying the course. Um, we were down as many as 10 or 11 points in the first half, you know, and, and you're right. Uh, uh, LCCC, it wasn't a, a team that I was looking forward to the sure. third matchup because they have a great interior game with Springs. Um, their point guard's very good at breaking down the defense. Uh, Hallie Hester and a couple others, very good three-point shooters. I mean, they're a very talented offensive team, very well coached. So it wasn't a matchup that I smiled about when I saw that's what we were going to have. So just such a, such a credit to our team for, for not panicking, not overreacting, because they could have had doubt just because of what you said, that you know it's hard to beat somebody a third time. And, and you know what really took off in the second half is our shooting. We, we got on fire. and. And once we get on a run, it, it's, it's fun to watch. Sure. Well, and you guys get 21 from Sandra, 20 from Jocelyn, and 19 from Julia. Um, but even more than that, Coach, you and I talk every week about the importance of those extra possessions yeah. and how every team is going to shoot pretty similar yes. statistically, but, but getting those extra yes. possessions. That's a game where you guys both shoot at exactly 40%. Coach, they score three more points than you guys from the free throw line. But you guys get 27 more shots because of eight more offensive rebounds and six less turnovers mm -hmm. than them. How important is it winning those two statistics? Well, I just think that's a big compliment to the, to the ladies because sure. those stats that you're talking about are effort stats, you know, uh, taking care of the basketball, creating turnovers, you know, the, how you get a differential is by forcing turnovers too, and that's defensive effort. And then it, to me, uh, winning the rebounding battle is all effort and stuff like that. So tribute to them for that. And, and we've talked multiple times already this, uh, during this show is how crucial that is to win the possession battle. Sure. So then we move on to Saturday Championship versus Western Wyoming, another team that you're playing for the third <laughs> time. You guys are able to come out 62-60 to 60 and get a victory. And speaking of offensive rebounds, talk about how big Logan Alvar was on Saturday. It's just uh, for the full, full game, but down the stretch, that last three, four minutes when the game was very pivotal. We were, you know, we were in a two, three-point ball game you know, for the last two, three minutes for sure. And um, she just made big play after big play. Offensive rebound, put back. Um, really, really had a huge impact on us taking the advantage going into the final buzzer. Yeah. And so Sandra makes a free throw um, with a few seconds left to end up putting the ice on the cake. Coach, you told me earlier in the year that one of your favorite things about coaching is getting to watch your team celebrate in a, mm -hmm. a championship like that and be able to cut down the nets. Mm -hmm. How cool was that? Well, this year was a little bit different. It was, uh, it was unreal because, you know, we, the, they, they had a chance to win it with, sure. with six seconds to go. Um, I think Julia tipped a pass and Sandra got a steal. Buzzer goes off and we celebration's on. Oh, Where here we stuff. go. Where's well, it? we got to review it. <laughs> so oh, so yeah. we stopped it. So they had to review because a foul was called at, during that time. And they had to review to see if there was any, <laughs> any uh, time on the clock left. And then there was like 0.6 seconds. And so Sandra had to shoot another free throw. And, okay. and so, so it kind of stole the thunder. You know, the, the team was ready to run out there yeah, and, course, and yeah. celebrate. And so it was a little bit uh, distorted there a little bit. But, you know, it, everybody bounced back from that little experience there. And, and the bus ride home was amazing. Oh, and sure. uh, when we got back here, we weren't able to cut the nets down at, at uh, Western Nebraska. So okay. they arranged it where we could cut them down here. And so uh, 
celebration. It, it's just so fun to see uh, when they reach a goal because I know how hard they work, sure. you know, and to, you could come up, you could do all that work and come up empty. And so it's really rewarding for me to see them excited about sure. that. Well, and Coach, you've had your handful of, of net cutting opportunities. Do you have a collection of nets somewhere where you, do you have? We have a few in the office around okay. the basketball. Yes, we, we, I, do, I do put that up in the office and, and um, it's, a good, it's a good memory of, of some teams in the past. Yeah, absolutely. So then Coach, they named the all tournament team. You get Logan, Sandra, Flora, Julia, all named to the all, mm -hmm. all tournament team. Um, but really, it was, a, it was a full team effort. Oh, a, that list could have continued as far as I'm concerned. Joslyn should have, or not should have. I don't want to say should because, you know, uh, these type of things are subjective. Sure. So there's nothing, you know, that should have. But, I mean, Joslyn had a great tournament team in, in or tournament um, as well. So uh, to have four on there, and that's kind of where it usually stops. No, I have not. I've been a part of this for a lot of time, and I've never seen anybody have five on there, so I suppose there was a long drive. But the four that were named, very, very well-deserving as well. So that, it, it was a good honor. Well, and I'm sure for you personally, you probably could have named about 10 T-Birds that probably deserve to be on that list. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no question. Just great effort all around. Sure. So, Coach, uh, national tournament time. Yes. You guys uh, go through the, the process of, of watching the seating mm -hmm. um, on Sunday. You guys end up drawing Walter State. Uh, the Lady Senators from Morristown, Tennessee, mm -hmm. they come in as the 18 seed, 25-4 uh, and four overall. They're the winners of the Region 7 Appalachian yes. District regular season and tournament. Mm -hmm. um, give us a little brief rundown of what you know about them. So Great far. program. Um, uh, they, they're consistently at the national tournament. Um, we've done some early observations. Um, I think they're a very talented team, uh, both offensively and defensively. Uh, their, their interior play is very good. Uh, Farrell is, a, is one of the better posts that we'll probably see during during the whole season here. Uh, well coached, you can tell they they execute well. Uh, uh, their offensive sets, so uh, there's no doubt that um, you know they they belong in that tournament. You know when you get to there, there every team's going to be good. That's the 24 best teams in the country out of uh, roughly 170 teams. So every one of those is going to be good. Um, I do feel like that if we are prepared and we compete, we're going to have a, as good a chance as they are. So I do like our matchup, um, but it, it's going to take a very good effort to win. Sure. So they're coming back to the the national tournament. This is their third year in a row. Mm -hmm. This is your third year mm -hmm. in a row. Obviously, at the junior college level, you don't have players that are staying for that long. Um, but talk about how important it is to have that experience for you as a coach, mm -hmm. for Jasmine Cole, mm -hmm. the coach there, um, to have that experience of being able to have played in this tournament before and have some idea of what's, what to expect. A lot of advantages, in, in my opinion, it, starting with the journey, you know, the trip, sure. you know, how to break out the trip. How do you want to plan the trip? Do you, do you make the 12-hour bus ride in, in one day or do you break it up in and setting up practice plan or practice schedules. And also I think it's, you, you have a good idea of how it's gonna be officiated because you've been there, you know, and there's gonna be a difference. In, and we'll talk to that about our, to our team. There, it's gonna be officiated different. And we, as always, you, it's on us to adjust to how it's being called. Um, I have a good idea on the talent level, you sure. know, for, you know, seeing what it takes to, to be successful down there. So I do think, you know, being there, in the recent past is an advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, for both of you, this is your third year in a row of going. The previous two years, neither of you have had any mm -hmm. success at the mm -hmm. tournament. Um, talk about what your goal is long-term with this thing. I know, obviously, Coach, you're, you're trying to win the national championship, mm -hmm. but is the focus one game at a time? A hundred percent. And, you know, like you said, we, we've been one and done the last three years, but we've been right there. Um, three years ago, we lost in overtime, and the year after that, we lost only by eight points, and we're right in it to the end. And then last year, we lost by three. So, you know, even though we weren't advancing, you know, we certainly were competing extremely well. And, you know, there's no reason looking any further than your first game because it's single elimination. So if we don't take care of Walter States, it doesn't matter what's, what's waiting in the wings yeah. for us. Coach, of the past, you guys have had the bye this year. You guys do not get the bye. You're playing in that first round. Is there a difference preparation-wise between mm -hmm. the two of those? You know, there's advantages and disadvantages, but I certainly, I, I felt like having the bye hurt us the year that we lost by eight because we're playing a team that came off of a, uh, an emotional win 
we still haven't been on the floor yet. We still had nerves, and I think there's a big advantage, you know, if you're coming off a win and having confidence and, and you know, have game experience there. So I, I'm a fan of playing that first round. I know if you advance deep, that means you could play five games, which is, which is a lot, but bring that on. I'll take that any day. But I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of playing the first round. Cool. Perfect. So, Coach, let's get into personnel a little bit with Walter State. Um, the Region 7 Tournament MVP, Kaylin Farrell, that yeah. you already mentioned, uh, she went through the tournament, scored 49 points, 24 rebounds. Uh, she's all conference in Region 7, um, comes in averaging 14.8 points a game and eight rebounds a game. Obviously, she's going to be a load in the post. She's going to be a very, very good matchup for us. Um, I think Florence Lena will, will have to have a great defensive effort because she can score with her back to the basket, but she's also pretty decent on the perimeter. I think she's like seven for 24 or 25% from the three-point line, so, so you have to honor that. You have to, you have to make sure that she's not getting open looks there. She can put it on the floor from the perimeter. So, you know, our post defense is going to have to go not just from the interior. They're going to have to be able to do it on the outside. Very good hands. Just a very polished post player. Sure. And luckily for you guys, you guys have seen some really good post yes. players in Region 9 so yeah. far. So um, the other player to talk about, Tyasia Reed, is the other all-conference player from um, Walter State. Comes in averaging uh, just over 14 points a game mm -hmm. and a lights-out three-point shooter. Yeah, very good three-point shooter. I think she has 162 attempts, right around 35% mm -hmm. there. Uh, she's another one that she could post up. She's a, a good physical presence, puts it on the floor well. Just, you know, when you get to this level, there, there's not a lot of weaknesses in sure. any individuals. It's just how big a separation is it from good to great, sure. you know, that sure. you have. And I think uh, Taisha would, would fit in. The, the, she's, she's a step above good. She's yeah. a nice player. Sure. So, Coach, I'm looking at this team statistically online yesterday. And, you know, statistically, I feel like offensively, you guys really match up. You guys average about the same mm -hmm. amount of points. You guys mm -hmm. shoot about the same percentage from, mm -hmm. from the field. Um, but then I get down to the defensive stats, and I, I recognize that they're only averaging allowing 45 points yeah. a game. Yeah. What are you guys going to have to do to score the ball offensively? You know, I just, A, we're going to have to take care of turnovers, okay? And B, you know, you, you just, you have to get second chances. If they're a good defensive play a team, you've got to rebound and you've got to get second chances and getting back to the possessions. And, you know, I, I, do, I do recognize stats a little bit, but, you know, I don't put a lot of stock into it because A, they reflect the competition that you're playing and, and that goes to ours too as well, you know. And then B, at least what I've experienced here in Region 9 and here, stats aren't always accurate. Of course, <laughs> yeah. of so, so, you know, you, you can use them as a guideline, but I, I trust my eyes more, you sure. know, than, than I do, you know, the stats uh, and, and that data, just because I do think that it can be skewed a little bit. Sure. So you guys, in the 15-18 in the matchup, the winner will get um, two-seed Eastern Florida State, 31-1 uh, mm -hmm. overall. I know you're not really looking ahead. Have you seen anything about them? Or? I haven't started yet. You know, I'm going to be 100% comfortable with how we're going to approach our first game before I even flip on, sure. flip on the tape for Eastern Florida. But I can assure you that time is coming, and it's coming in the near future. We're pretty close with our preparation with, sure. with Walters. But, you know, I've been following their scores all year. They're another one that's very good defensively and very athletic. And, you know, they're, they're going to be probably considered one of the favorites to win the tournament. Sure. So, you know, what, I, what I'm hoping for is the opportunity to play them and just see how we match up. That's, we need to be Walter State and then see how, where the chips fall. Sure. So, Coach, let's move on from basketball a little bit. Yep. Um, in the near future, you guys have a 12-hour bus ride. Yeah. What's the bus ride going to look like for you? Um, what's the bus ride going to look like for the kids? Well, they won't see much of the bus ride. Okay. You know, yeah. we're, we're going to leave at 5 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I got some oh-my-gosh looks. But I told them, I said, we leave at 8, you're going to fall asleep in 10 seconds anyway. If we leave at 5, you're going to fall asleep in 10 <laughs> sure. seconds. These guys are going to sleep the majority of the yeah. trip. Uh, we'll break it up, though. We're gonna, we'll stop in, in uh, along the way, probably stop at Castle Rock and, you know, and give them a chance to do a little shopping. And, and that brought up a cheer when I mentioned oh, that. Sure. And, yeah. <laughs> so, College but, girls shopping. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Not, not the thing that I'm looking forward to. But <laughs> sure. uh, no, they're pretty excited about that. Um, we haven't finalized it if we're going to go all the way or if we're going to try to find a practice time uh, along the way. What I'm hoping to do is, is get all the way to Lubbock on Monday, get a practice time set up Tuesday, and then we have our tournament shoot around Tuesday afternoon. So, you know, that, that's kind of our goal right now. Sure. But uh, we'll try to break it up the trip as much as possible just to get the bus legs off. But we do have 48 hours before we play. Nice. Yep. 
And so you say a 5 a.m. lead time. Any sort of send-off plan for you know, not 5 a.m.? Not that I heard of, and probably deciding to leave at 5 a.m. is going to discourage that a little bit. Yeah. But but not, I'm not aware of any sure. at this time. Yeah. Well, and, and I'll be supporting you guys, but I will not be there at 5 a.m., unfortunately. <laughs> you know what, Phil? I will not hold that against you or anybody else. I don't, I don't blame you one bit. <laughs> I appreciate that. So then, Coach, Wednesday is the day. Yeah. Um, 1 o'clock Mountain Standard Time from Lubbock, Texas. Uh, you can find information on the Casper College website, tbirds.cc. Um, mm -hmm. There is a $10 day pass available to watch all the games that day. There's also a $30 tournament pass for anybody that's interested in watching all the tournament and hopefully being able to follow you guys throughout the rest of the tournament. I'm, I'm hoping we have quite a few views going on there. I, I, I'm very confident in this team. I'm very confident that if we play to our potential, we have a chance to be there in that tournament for a long time very proud of what we've accomplished to this date, but I honestly don't think it's done. Sure. Well, and Coach, I got to tell you, the city of Casper is proud of yeah, you as well. thank you. I mean, what a great uh, just following for you. I know you had a great following that went down to Scott's yes, Club this week. Yes, um, You know, all the TVs here in Casper were turned on to watch yeah. you guys at the college. Um, I know we were following along and rooting for you guys from, from here. So um, we're, we're all proud of you as well. It, uh, that, that support you don't know how well, how good it makes myself feel, but man, does it resonate with the team. So uh, all of our fans, everybody that has supported us, it, it, it does mean a lot to the team and it's greatly appreciated. We don't take that for granted. So thank you, everybody. Absolutely. Coach, any last words before we wrap up? Uh, just again, just we appreciate our fans and we're hoping we can entertain for a few more games before this season comes to a close and uh, couldn't be prouder of my team. Absolutely. Very happy. Absolutely. So Wednesday, uh, March 22nd, you can go to the Casper College website, tbirds.cc, sign up for a pass, and, and cheer on our Lady Thunderbirds from here in Casper. Fans, as always, shoot for the stars, because even if you miss, there's always a chance for an offensive <laughs> rebound. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>